All right. So now that you know what we're about to build and you've seen the exact demo, let's go ahead and talk about in a step by step manner that how we can build this. We'll divide this entire big long video into sub chunks so that we can discuss the thing what could be have done better in the Moshia and how we can actually uh, have a plan of action to do this in a nice and easy way. The best part about the Moshia that I like is it's, it doesn't always need to be a standalone app. It can also integrate in your existing application whether you're building in Express or anything else. And you can have this exact steps and workflow with your existing application. That's what I like. And for that, we need to actually delete a lot of stuff in the existing pre-cooked application or template that it give, us, give to us. Let me take you onto the screen and walk you through with this. First of all, let's discuss the steps that we have. I have designed a kind of a whiteboard for you to get the steps up, up and running for this one. So if you look at this, we have the first challenge in front of us, which is post slash submit. This is where the endpoint will hit or somebody will hit an endpoint. And the step is to just receive the data here. The data for us is the channel name and the email ID. And the step is submission API. It emits a YouTube uh, submit event, but that's a later part. First of all, we want to just receive the data. In order to receive the data, first and foremost, we need to go onto the Moshe and create a project and have to actually make it bare minimum so that we can remove the stuff. We will take some help from their example, from their GitHub repository and some of their examples that they give us. Otherwise, how will we learn? <laughs> There's no other way. So let's just copy this and go up here. I'll open up the terminal. This actually takes time and this is all a fault of node. <laughs> and you don't need to actually add a dot at the end of it because it automatically asks you. Even if you give that, it says, I don't know what that argument is. Uh, so there we go. it doesn't understand that argument. So when you run this, you don't need to do this. You can just simply go ahead and hit an enter. It automatically will understand that, hey, would you like to go as base of TypeScript or base as Python? We'll probably do Python in some another video. Right now, let's just hit the TypeScript. The project name, our current directory is all good enough. I'll leave this as a blank. And yes, I want to proceed and there we go. Now, what it gives us is a lot of files and a lot of folders because it shows us how the basic of an application looks like. We can just go ahead and run this as it is as well. There is no problem in that. Uh, but we'll prefer to delete a lot of files from it so that we understand what the Moshe does and how we can use it in a standalone application or integrate in an existing application as well. A couple of things. We do have a source folder, which actually does work on the create pets and index and types and whatnot. Zod schemas and stuff. If you have seen previous of my video, we have discussed this briefly that it's all types and all of that. We will be moving a whole lot of stuff, but first I want to run the application as it is so that I can see, is it working fine or not? We do have a tutorial.tsx as well. Uh, Moshe Dev Workbench and all of that. All right, can we run this now? How do we run it? Packers.json, we do have a script inside this which says uh, Moshe Dev. So let's just say npm run dev. It is also saying, hey, happy and run this npm run dev. I'll do that. npm run dev and hopefully this should run it is all creating all the steps workbench and all of that let's open this up and there we go nice and easy Moshe endpoints and step no we don't want this i have actually created a dedicated video on this uh, walkthrough tutorial which impressed me a lot we have this tracing and everything uh, we can have the tutorial as well all right this is all good enough it is working fine decently i'm not interested in this as of now for this video I have my different goals for this one, so I'll just stop this. And it's time that we actually remove a whole lot of stuff from this. I'll keep the Moshe and Zod, although I'm not going to be using Zod, but you can just keep it. It's not going to harm anything. Dev dependencies are there. We'll keep them. And we have some of the Moshe scripts as well. That is also there. That's fine. And in this name, I don't like the dot. It also gives the current directory reference, but I'll give the name to this one. I'll call this one as simply, this one is my Moshia YouTube application, something like that. Description, you can give this. I also recommend everyone to just give a version to your application. It is a good idea that you should have at least a version of this. And that's it. And here's the interesting part. Okay, now it's time to remove the stuff. First of all, can we remove the entire source directory, services, pet store? Yes, turns out, yes, you can remove all of this. And your application can be entirely dependent on just the steps. And I was impressed with that. And yeah, this is a little scary for a lot of people that can we just go ahead and remove all of this? Yeah, we can. And in the steps, 
what you'll notice that right now we have this pet store and inside this a lot of steps and feature JSON and all of this. We actually can turn it down into much more easier and simpler to understand this. So I'll just right click on this and we'll delete even this one. Yeah, go ahead and remove the pet store as well. And we have Moshia Workbench as well, which actually gives you those icons and stuff. We can define them later on. As of now, that's also not the visual impact I'm going for. I just my app, want my application to work on. So let's just go ahead and delete this. And we have a TS config. I'll keep this. This is no problem at all. And we have tutorial.tsx. I don't need this. I can just remove this. Uh, I've already seen the tutorial, so that is okay. Uh, don't touch the types.ds because it is generated, so we want to keep it. It actually gives you this event handler, API route handler, API response, motion st motion stream, and cron. I wish they could have given me one more file. It doesn't exist, but I'll show you how I expect it to be there. Uh, it should be something like, it doesn't exist by the way. It should be something like moshia.config.ts or js. There should be default configuration of Moshe, which I can use and pass it on as an object. For example, uh, let's just say if I go ahead and say export default, and then I pass on an object which says what should be the name of this particular project. Let's just say if I define a YouTube title doctor, and then most importantly, I can mention where my steps folder are because Moshe is dependent too much on the steps. I know it directly looks into the current directory and there should be a steps folder inside it. But if I could control it, that would be nice. It doesn't as of now. I think in future they might have it. Now, if we go and look into some of their examples, I went into their docs. I dived too much depth into that. This is what we want to build. Remember, this is our step. We want to build API endpoints and this is where the docs of API endpoint starts. We can build a slash post, get, put, delete, so all the endpoints are there. And they have some of the nice examples for this as well. Uh, we are not worried on that part. If we just go ahead and scroll this, this is where the examples are. So we can create this config here, which is API route config, we'll do that. And we have all these data and details all up here. And also notice this, this says that handler, the function that executes the business logic can be written in TypeScript, Python or JavaScript. When I went into one of their example, which is where they mentioned this. Yep, this is, I hope you can see this just here. <laughs> just look at this. So they can actually write the steps in a JavaScript folder, in the Python or in the TypeScript and whole of your team can actually work independently writing their own steps in their own favorite programming language. The example is nice to understand that how the same thing can be written in a different language, but we'll go with the TypeScript as of now. And uh, that's all. So hope this gives you an idea that how we'll be going. I, I actually went into their repository, tried to find that do you have some of the uh, define config or some way to define your configuration? Couldn't find it. If you find it, let me know in the comment section, but I think that's it. So now if you look at this, this file, by the way, doesn't exist. Uh, this is just for me, hoping that it will come someday. Uh, so as of now, I can see that there is this uh, step that we have as of now, and that's it. That's all it takes. Now, all we have to do is, the next step is, understand this one file here, either in Python, either in JavaScript or in the TypeScript. Just study this much of the portion and write our configuration for accepting the data from the user. And we'll use some of the basic part of it. And that's it. That's your whole configuration. If you want to explicitly install this in your existing application, as you can see, this is the most important file, which is types.d.ts. So go ahead and grab and copy paste it from any of their repository. Uh, although it generates it, you don't need that. And also what you need is TypeScript configuration, which I think your application might already might have one. And all you need is Moshe and some scripts of Moshe, especially this dev script, which is just simple to write dev Moshe dev. Uh, surely you can have just generate types to generate this type.ts. That's also there. But I think the most important script is just dev. You can have just one dependency, npm install Moshia, we are still in beta, and you can just simply say that I want the dev script. That is it. And you can actually have a steps folder, and that's it. And I wish if I could have this special file, I could have kept this steps folder inside some source or wherever I want. But that is it. That's your uh, step that, hey, we have installed successfully and configured Moshia the way we want. In the next one, we will write our step one, next part of the video. Let's go there.